Alright, hello. Uh, just a moment, still setting up some stuff. Okay, I think we are good to go. So, tonight, um, I was thinking of trying out some retro super collider. Uh, if you've seen some of my earlier streams or my YouTube videos, you'll know that I like to program music stuff with super collider. And, um, well, mainly I do that on macOS and Linux and Windows. Um, and the current version of Super Collider runs on macOS 10 point something and above. But it turns out that Super Collider actually, in the past, also supported macOS 9 and I happen to have here a power Mac that runs macOS 9. Uh, I've done some retro computing streams in the past so this is kind of like a convergence of these two interests you know music programming and retro computing. What if we run or what if we do music programming on a retro computing platform? That should be fun, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, but before that... Let me just turn down this music for a second. Uh, so before all that, I want to do a quick promotion of some of my music that was just released. Um, let's get Firefox open here. So... I have a track on this 90s rave compilation compiled by Zvrra. Uh, it just came out this week. It's called Megazone with an X, Volume 1. And uh, this is a great compilation. I really love what everyone did here. Uh, the idea was kind of like, what if it was the 90s and we... Uh, well, first of all, we were old enough to be of rave age and we had access to um, music production equipment, then what kind of rave tune would we make? And uh, there's so much good stuff here. I, I've been listening to this compilation on repeat at work. <laughs> it's just really good. And my track is also on here. It's called Y2K. And, um, well, my idea was basically that I imagine that it's 1999, uh, everyone's super anxious about what's going to happen with, you know, the Y2K problem. Uh, are all the computers going to crash? Is society going to go under because of that? <laughs> Well, as we now know, uh, a lot of people put in a lot of programming work to make sure that didn't happen. But, yeah, I mean, I was like nine, year old, nine years old back then, so I had a vague understanding of the problem because, you know, I was into computers from a young age. Um, 
but yeah, I was pretty scared. <laughs> but so for this track, I sampled this documentary about the Y2K problem uh, featuring Leonard Nimoy. Uh, and then I used a bunch of retro synth VSTs and uh, 90s sample CDs and made a track. Yeah, so I imagined it was 1999 and I think if I had been a music producer at that time I would have been heavily inspired by trance and specifically Goa trance which was, well, back then it was, some people think it was kind of a golden age for the genre. So my track is something in that direction. It's not what I would call pure Goa trance, but heavily inspired and you know what, uh, I'll just play it for you. And then after that we can get into Super Glider. And now I don't have audio output from this browser, so I'm just gonna do this off screen. And here we go, Y2K. December 31st, 1999, and January 1st, 2000.
Y2K. How can we prepare individually? How can we work together as global neighbors to make the best of whatever may occur before and after January 1st of the year 2000? That's Y2K. So, as I said, Megazone Volume 1 is available on Zvira's Bandcamp, uh, zvira.bandcamp.com, and it's a free download. Okay, uh, that's enough about that. Now, Super Collider. So, um, the contemporary version of Super Collider is 3.12, I think, something like that. Um, there's this um, older Super Collider website, which is at audiosynth.com, I think. Yes. So, this is interesting because there's all sorts of historical material about Super Collider. But in particular, we have here uh, downloads for Super Collider 2.2.16. This is the Mac OS 9 version. And then we also have 3D 5.1, which is an experimental version but it also runs on Mac OS 9. And to be honest, I'm curious about both of these, but I think we're gonna start with uh, the less experimental version, so 2.2.16. And um, I have actually already downloaded these to the other computer, but they are not on the Power Mac yet, so I'll have to transfer them over. Uh, that's okay. 
Let me just find my correct folder here. OS9. And then I have to start up a HTTP server, but I forgot because I made a command for this, but I forgot what it's called. should have done this in advance, but I was busy fixing the streaming stuff. Um, okay, well, at least I can put on some music while I do this. Okay, that should do it. Um, then I'll get rid of this web browser here so we can see the Power Mac. So let's open Classilla. So for those who don't know, this is a web browser for the classic macOS that unfortunately is no longer maintained, but it'll do for downloading stuff off the local network. So here we go, SC 2.2.16. We'll save that. Actually, let's Download the other one just so we have it. All right, and then we should be able to extract this, but I think we need to. Drop it on Stuff It Expander. Yeah, I'm very curious to see how different Super Glider 2 is from the version 3. Point, I think I started with 3.9 or something like that. Yeah, 
from what I understand, version 3 was quite a radically different system, but I don't know what exactly that means. So... Um, okay, so it extracts it, but... But I guess it's gonna have some... Uh, funny date modified. Um, let's see here. Oh, there we go. SC 2.2. Let's put it in our applications folder. And then I'm just gonna make an alias. So it's easier to launch. Arrange uh, by name. Okay, and then we have SEO drivers and that kind of stuff, but for now that's not gonna be needed because all I have is the built in output, so I imagine this will work without any drivers. Well, let's start it up and see what it looks like. Yep, there is Super Glider. We have a post window, just like in version 3. So this is where all the output is printed. And from here we can already see that it's detected our hardware, sample rate, buffer size, and it's detected that we don't have OpenS, which is the, I think it's Open Music System, which was uh, one of the MIDI implementations for Mac OS 9. So if we had OMS, I guess then we could use MIDI. Hmm, that's interesting but I maybe won't set that up right now. And then it does basically what SuperCollider 3 does, compiles all the class files and whatnot. So then, how do we get started? Presumably we'll have to make a new document. Um, so now I'm just gonna Try stuff out, like things that I would do in Super Collider 3. Uh, so we have evaluate selection, uh, well, print selection, run main and stop. Doesn't make sense though, or is it? Huh, okay. So it seems like in this version we get output in the same window where we type code. So it's more like a terminal window, I guess. Um, then maybe we don't need this window at all, but we could just type stuff here. Do we have strings? Yes. Um, let's look at some documentation, maybe read me. Uh, 
first read the files getting help and how to use the interpreter by typing command H. Okay. Or from the lang menu, open help. Alright, so we have a built-in help system just like in version 3. Size these things a little. So there's clearly wants a pretty wide window, so let's just do that. Double-click on any square bracket to select text within the brackets, indicating the topic of interest, then type command H to open the file. Okay. So we double-click there, command H. Now, I need to open this in a new window. So, command H is the thing to do to get help about pretty much anything. Oh, or we can open the class definition with command J. Cool. How to use the interpreter. Okay, now we get some code examples. Any single line expression by clicking anywhere in that line and pressing the enter key. Not the same key as return. Oh yeah, that's true. So it's the numpad enter key. So presumably if I press enter here, we should hear a sine wave at 800 hertz. Let's try it. Yep. There's multiple lines, we have to select all of the lines. Okay, let's try this out. Oh, that didn't work. Oh, there we go, I think I selected something wrong. So, we have... This is looking quite familiar, actually. So we have ways to make wavetables, basically, um, with a signal class. So we make a signal that's 512 samples, then we fill it with signs, and we have multi-channel expansion here because we're doing 1.0 divided by this array. So that means we're gonna get an array with one divided by each of these elements. Normalize as wavetable and then viewing it graphically with wavetable view. Okay. Uh, however, yeah, we have parentheses so we can easily select the whole expression. Okay, let's try this one. Okay, I think now I need to pause the music. It's pretty quiet, but we can hear some interesting String resonators, I guess, judging from the comments. If I stop that and... Um I just want to make it a little louder, maybe times two here. Yep, 
Yeah. Okay. Um, so to play... Okay, so we have, just like in Super Collider 3, we have anonymous lambda functions, which are uh, denoted by the curly brace. And then to play that, we use the play function. Although in Super Collider 3, we would usually type this dot play. I wonder if we could do that here. Whoops. Yeah, looks like it's the same thing. Cool, now we know how to use the interpreter. Uh, why Super Collider? Well, I have my own answer to that. I'm not sure if we really need to read this, but... Yeah, there are good reasons to prefer a text-based music programming language over visual ones, for me at least. Um, what's new? Don't really care right now. Uh, menus, is there anything? Mm, well, I think these are gonna be... Mostly self-explanatory, so I'm not going to look at that right now. Intro to objects. Mm, so this is like... Basic concepts of the language, literals, method calls, assignment. Uh, let me check here. So I think we may have uh, global variables like in Super Collider 3 where the single little letter variable names are global by default and then probably to define other variables we would use var. Uh, I think maybe there was something like that in here. Yeah, var delay time, and we always have to declare these at the beginning of a function, and then we can work with it. Cool. Um, so this is looking quite a bit more familiar than I expected, maybe. Uh, let's see about control structures. We have if. while for for by to yep looks all very very familiar huh uh yeah then synthesis i guess here we may have some differences because i see we're talking about f sin osc or sine osc Whereas in Super Collider 3, I think uh, this might exist, but there's also just sine OSC. I'm not sure what the F stands for. Multi channel, I basically know how that works. Oh, and then OSC. I was worried that would not be a feature in this version, but it seems like it is.
Although, yeah, these classes are clearly different from what we have in Superquadrant 3. So there's... Well, I don't know if they are or if there's just like new abstractions in version 3. But yeah, I think normally in version 3 we would use net adder to open an output port and then for an input port I would typically write like an OSC func or OSC diff. I'm not gonna use that immediately. Uh, low frequency versus band limited oscillators. Oh yeah, we have LF versions for 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 when you wanna. Go at audio rates, I guess. Or well, when you don't want band limiting. Um, yeah. Then built-in classes. Yeah. Then the next interesting thing is gonna be the UGen reference sheet, because UGens are what we use to make sound unit generators okay so apparently in the same file we have also unary operators I think well at least in version 3 those are not huge per se but whatever right so we have Wavetables, chorusing, wavetable, uh, wavetable crossfade. Ah, we have also sine OSC, and then F sine OSC is just <laughs> a very fast version of that. Okay. Um, Filters, LPF, PPF. Alright. Envelope generators, yes. Trick. I wonder if this is like impulse in SC3. Oh no, this is a different thing. Um, I wonder if we have impulse, impulse sequencer. Yeah, I guess impulse must be here as well. Okay, well, then the main thing I'm wondering is whether we have patterns like in SC3. Um, triggers, I wonder what that is. Oh yeah, that's just trig. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything about patterns. So I guess that may be something that's new in SC3. And in that case, my question is, how do we sequence stuff? Or do we have to do it all in the... Um, in the synth code? Controls... Oh yeah, it's these things. Oh yeah, there's impulse, which I was wondering about. Hmm. Yeah, 
so I guess we don't have patterns. Uh, do we have... What was it called? Routine? Oh, yes, we do. Wait, but if that's the case, then... Uh, what's the pattern? Okay, no pdef. Trying to remember what other patterns there are in SC3. Um, playlist. Yeah, so it seems we don't have patterns, but we do have routines, which are basically what patterns are built out of. Um, Oh yeah, we have streams. Let's see if there's some interesting examples for like sequencing music. Mm, I guess not. Okay, well, let's start off more basic. So um I'm not sure how this works, like if I... Okay, we can't use that syntax. Now if I were to save this, how does that work? Like. I'm just wondering if it, it's gonna include also the output stuff or because it seems like it's just you know text now if we open yeah all right well that's fine so I'm gonna start with is maybe let's synthesize a kick drum. Um, you know, maybe I'll just say var kick and then kick is gonna be this function which will use Mm, wait. Not quite sure how scoping works here. So now, let's see, or let's say kick is a function that prints or posts, as it's called, uh, the number two. Yeah, that seems to be a thing. Uh, so now we should be able to call the kick function with this. Oh, okay. So the scoping is like in Super Collider 3. So the variable kick does not exist outside of these parentheses. But what if I put this here? Okay, that doesn't work either. Do we have... Actually, can I just... No, but this didn't work. So, variable kick not defined. But in SC3 we have global variables that begin with a tilde. 
Um, I don't really understand this error message. Okay, um, do we have dictionaries? Yes. I think this. Okay, so let's make I for instruments a uh, dictionary that holds our instrument functions. So then I think I can do I kick. I wonder if there's some way I don't have to keep clicking this to select everything. Um, within the parentheses. Because one of the neat things about SC3 is that when you're inside these parentheses you can press I think it's shift return and then it just evaluates the whole thing. Um, but it looks like we may not have that kind of thing here. So then we'll just have to keep double clicking. Oh, wait, do we not have symbols? No, we do. But then... Maybe the dictionary access syntax doesn't work this way. So it seems like access works this way, or like getting the value by key, but then this doesn't. So maybe we need to do add kick like so. No. Oh, maybe we need to use the key value syntax, like so. Okay, I think that worked, maybe. Yeah, nice. So now we can do... this or not? Huh. That's a little strange. Uh, let's see the help for set again. seeing any examples of just like indexing the collection. Mm, 
depth is a little weird. Is there maybe a get function? No. Just guessing. No. It's so weird that the dictionary doesn't have any more help than this. Is there maybe a help file for like data structures or something? Collection? No, but this is what I was just looking at. <gasps> Sorry, this is a bit slow to start with, but that's just how it goes when working with something a little unfamiliar. Let me just see if we have a list like this, then can we index? No. Um, could it be at? Yes. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. So we can index the dictionary and uh, we can call the function by invoking the value method. And that Oh yeah, well, I get two times two because I pressed command P, so it'll both print the output and then separately it <laughs> prints because of this post line call here. here. Right. Um, now I wonder, can I run this again? And it'll replace it. Yeah, presumably. Yep. Great. Um, okay, then we can start thinking about signal processing. So the way I like to do this is declare a variable sig. Oh, we get automatic indentation, that's nice. And sig is gonna be f sine osc, and um, wait, I'm finding some interesting hotkeys. So okay, if I'm at a parenthesis, like a closing parenthesis, then shift alt uh, left seems to select the whole thing. So I guess that's like, yeah, select until matching parenthesis. Okay, that's very convenient. Um, right. But it does mean I don't have a way to select words, which I normally would use um, Alt for, but that's fine. Uh, let's look at the help here. So this just takes the, the frequency. Let's say we want to start at, oh, I don't know, 1000 hertz. Um, At the end, we want to scale our amplitude by half, so we don't, so I don't blow out your ears. And um, another thing I want to do is apply an envelope. So we have n of gen, I believe. Uh, 
And this, I think... Looks quite similar to... SC3, except that... We don't seem to have a done action. I see something called release time. So, okay, for some context, um, one common way to manage um, synths in Super Collider, specifically how they get released, because like whenever you play a synth, it spawns a new synth, and then you have to release it at some point, unless you want to just like keep <laughs> building up synths and. Uh, that will eventually use up a lot of CPU. So in SC3, a common way to work, to um, deal with that is to use an envelope which has a done action. So typically you'll put that on the amplitude envelope. So when the amplitude envelope finishes, um, it calls the done action, and the done action is typically um, what's it called? It's called free self, which means that when that envelope ends, the synth is automatically freed. Um, but it seems we don't have that here, and instead there's something called release time, and let's look at the help for that, but we don't get any. Hmm. Uh, is there a section for synths? Uchens and synths. This doesn't mention the release time. Um, and also this is quite strange because the function gets us argument something that is called synth here, and then on that we set the release time. Uh, let's see if this does what I expect. Huh? Okay, so it did release after two seconds, but I wish I could find some documentation on this. Uh, oh, audio classes synth. Yeah, this is quite different from what I used to trying to wrap my head around all this. Um, I 
because it seems you can also run a task in the synth. So this is like, it feels like, um, like the functionality of clocks in SC3 is here also part of the synth class to some extent because at least in SC3 I would normally use a clock to schedule events like, I don't know, maybe you can do it this way in SC3 as well, but Let's have a listen to this. Okay, so it's just one frequency change. What is a plug? No, oh, it's like a generic input type of thing, I guess. confused by all this, but that's fine, let's... Let's try to do something here. So, N of Gen... Um, we're gonna make an envelope. Uh, I wonder if we have... Okay, let me just try this in a separate line. So, in SC3 we have an envelope which takes the positions along the envelope, then a list of times to move between those. So, is this a valid thing? Seems like it, yeah. Yeah, levels times curves. So we'll put that in here. And I think the default curve is zero for linear. Let's try that for now. Oh, and we want to multiply here. Does it work if I take this 
has a separate thing on play. No. Um. Well, uh, let's let's go back to the help here. Um, look at. Eugens and Synths, I guess. I'm just gonna make this as simple as possible and try it each time. Okay, so even that does not work. What if it's just the F sine OSC? Oh, huh. nope. Do we have to pass uh, amplitude here? Do not understand why this is failing. Does this even work? Wait, we're not getting anything from here either. Um. Let's try one of the examples here. Okay, that works. All oh, right. This is not wrapped in the play function, so of course it doesn't do anything. Oh, now I see. I forgot. <laughs> The AR, so we have audio rate and control rate uh, Eugens, and we have to specify which one we want. Yep. Alright. So we put an AR here, and an AR here. And now that works. Let's try setting the release time so we get the synthesis argument. I'll set 0 0.5 here and uh, maybe we can use that here. Okay, and here we notice a major difference from SC3. Uh, it seems that only one thing can be playing at a time. So it's not like SC3 where you can build up the composition over time by running different pieces of code, which means I guess we'll have to 
if we want to make like a composition, we'll have to put the whole thing in one thing, like one block that can be run. Hmm. So it's a bit of a different paradigm. Then I guess that explains why we don't have the done actions, because things will just keep running until you stop it, but there's no way to add new things that are playing. So, okay. Then I'm not gonna bother with this data structure, I think. We're gonna make a local variable. Um, okay, and so far this doesn't actually sound like a kick, it's just a sine wave. Um, let's fix that. So, we'll make a new envelope, and that's gonna be the frequency envelope or pitch envelope is another name for it but that's gonna be an generator AR and um, here we're gonna set our frequencies I wonder if we have the MIDI CPS function yes so we can convert MIDI notes to uh, frequencies Now, what's a good base note? Um, say thirty six. So that'll be where we end our kick drum, then our starting note will be, or you know what, um, we can put this in variables, so, or actually I'll call this frequency 1 and frequency 0, so frequency 1 is going to be this, and frequency 0 is going to be that times, let's say we're going to go 2 octaves higher, so times 4. And then here we can put these variables instead. Then put our, um, the duration of this frequency envelope. So this could be something like 0 0.1 and we'll start with a linear curve and maybe tweak that. Now does this work? Yeah, that sounds more like a kick drum. Maybe we can even go 3 octaves above. Let's shorten the release time a little. Oh. I keep forgetting that I have to stop the already playing thing. Alright, we have a kick, and then the next question is how do we play a pattern of kicks? I 
guess. We could use the scheduling somehow. Actually, I'm not going to bother with this variable because I think we'll have to build everything inside of... No, wait. No, maybe we disregard that. I'm going to put this back. Um... But yeah, uh, I'm going to go look at the synth documentation again. So we can call schedule, but how do we make a repeating thing? I think there's another Yes, schedules a task to be repeated periodically. Right, okay, that's one way. Uh, but I'm thinking, what if we use triggers for this? So, the end of gen, I think, takes a gate. And we can generate gates. Uh, I wonder if we have keyword arguments. Oh, I don't like that. Do a little formatting. Um, impulse every second, or rather, one hertz, which is every second. But uh, let's try this. Oh, that doesn't work because it is just the frequency envelope. Okay, let's put this into... a variable, so... This is gonna be our trigger. We give it to the frequency envelope, but then also... the amplitude envelope. Oops. One thing I'm noticing is that there's only one level of undo, so I like it. Command C does undo and then redo, so I have to be a bit careful there. What about this? This should give us a repeating kick. Or not? Oh, because I put a release time, but uh, I wonder is this common syntax? Wrong type. Okay, but what is wrong type?
So one thing about Super Collider is that the error messages can be really hard to decipher. I don't think I changed that much. Does it not like the multi line somehow? I mean, that seems ridiculous, but. No, that's not it. Am I using impulse correctly? So confused. Oh, of course. So I deleted the part where I defined synth dot release time, but then I still kept using it here. So let's make a variable for that. Or, you know, it doesn't have to be a variable, we can just put it here. 0 0.2. Okay, then let's go back here. Uh, gate trig. Now, let's see. Still just one kick drum. Looks right. Okay, let's try something else. Um, what if we just have an impulse AR at one hertz? Yeah, that gives us a click every second, as I would expect. So then, the gate must not be working like I expect it to.
not sure if I'm just missing something super obvious, but this to me seems like it should be the way to make re-triggering envelopes. What if I get rid of the amplitude envelope? Uh, that's interesting. You know, I think something weird happened. So, I wanna save this just in case. Okay, um... So that just leaves us at the frequency 1. So it was kind of distorted for some reason. my output level isn't quite right here so I'm gonna try to adjust it um, warning this might be loud so if you're wearing headphones um, be careful I don't know what's distorting like that. That's weird. I guess I'll have to keep the levels a bit lower. Um, but yeah, this did still not explain why the trigger is not working, or the gate rather. Um, let's see, so... If, if this is like if the keyword argument is a problem after all but then I would expect it to say like a syntax error or whatever let's try putting 0101 and uh, dropping the keyword Um, that 
that's <laughs> that's definitely not a kick drum. Wait, what do these arguments mean again? All right, we have to select. Multiply. Oh, wait. This should be one, zero. Level scales gives the levels. Yeah, we don't want that. That error is a little weird. <laughs> Um, because it comes up when I try to save, and now I'm not sure if it's actually saved, so let's see. It's not. Good thing I copied it, and now it is saved. Okay, does this work? Definitely not. Okay, but here we have something about triggering the envelope with a pulse wave. Let's see then uh, if instead of impulse we use this. Wait, am I missing one more argument? Ah, oh, time scale. That's why it was breaking. But it's still not re-triggering the envelope. Why is that? Let's try this example here. The only obvious difference I see is that they're using a control rate tree. Oh, maybe that's the thing. Nope. Then is it because I'm not using ADSR? Let's try this one for the hell of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it preserves the formatting. That's lovely. That failed because that's supposed to be a comma.
Now I don't hear anything. Weird. Okay, I'm gonna mess around with this example and see if I can make it break. Let's get rid of the comments. Also, we can get syntax highlighting, but we have to do it manually. Or like, by clicking syntax colorize. Um, can I make this? Yep. Now it matches and... Um, yeah, so this... That works. Then let me replace this with a constant. Oh, maybe it was because I didn't specify this. I think this is the duty cycle of the pulse. Yeah. This should still work, and also I should be able to put this directly in here, and I should be able to play instead of scope. Yeah, that works. So now I wonder if I just have to put a duty cycle here, let's say 0 0.01. No. Oh wait, I was supposed to uncomment that. Still not working. Um, let's try the ADSR. And now we get nothing. I'm gonna call this gate instead of trick just because. Yeah, that doesn't change anything, of course. Um, let's see if we can scope instead of play. That is strange. No, wait, it's not. <laughs> uh, the problem is that... My values are now wrong, because I used the ADSR. Where is the documentation for that? Yeah, so... Peak level is the fifth argument. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Um, I wonder if we have a range function.
Guess not. Uh, what about lin, lin, linear to linear? No. Um. Yeah, I'm just wondering how I'm supposed to change the range of this ADSR. Oh, is it by using the antigen parameters? So that would be Why is this so hard today? Um, so we're gonna multiply by this. Is that... Well, let's just try. Uh, frequency 1 goes there. scale and level bias. Maybe those are the ones I want to use actually. Like so. I don't know if this makes sense. Let's <laughs> give it a try. Interesting. Is it doing something? Let's try to increase this. Okay. Now we're getting a rhythmic thing. Um, do I just put frequency zero here? That seems wrong, but. now also work or is that different? Yeah, that works. Amplitude is changing for some reason. That does not make sense to me, but whatever. 
Uh, I don't want to use an ADSR here. If the normal envelope doesn't work, then I'm gonna try the percussive one. So, okay, I have to look it up. Uh, not this one. Okay, so we get attack time, release time, peak level, and curve. So for the attack, I want zero here. And for the release, 0 0.1. Peak level is just one, because we're scaling it down here. And a curve. Let's put zero for now. still a weird change in the amplitude and I don't understand where that's coming from. Because we don't have an amplitude envelope at all right now. Well, let's make one, why not? So we can use a percussive envelope here as well. Oh, but I renamed the variable. This is now not really working at all. Let me just for a second put constant here. Oh yeah, here we don't have enough arguments, that would be why. Okay, now let's bring back the frequency envelope. Leaky. I wonder if we can reset the phase on the gate triggering. Wait. The amplitude of the wave will vary with frequency. Is that why we're getting weird? Amplitude variation. Let's just use the normal sinos. But 
But yeah, I don't know if we can reset the face. But that's fine. Uh, let's put here a couple of milliseconds of attack, so it's maybe not quite as clicky. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> we have a kick drum. Um, then, in addition to impulse, there was the other one that was like, I think you could give a pattern, but now I forget what it's called. Uh, let's try to find it. Triggers, probably. Or not. Where was it? Maybe in the Yuchen ref sheet. Impulse sequencer. So with this, we should be able to get some kind of rhythms going. Uh, let's see, impulse sequencer, then the sequence. Wait, do we need K R A R? Yeah. Um, let's try a simple pattern at first. So this also needs a trigger. Let's have a impulse that is making impulses every sixteenth note. Uh, for that, I guess we want to define a tempo. Wait, but there's maybe a built-in way to do that. You know what, I don't care. I'll just do it myself. So our tempo will be... Let's say this is in cycles per second. So we don't have to deal with BPM right now. Um, say 2.5 and um, yeah then this should just be Tempo times 16, right? Right? Because the tempo is here expressed as a frequency, so then to get 16ths, like a frequency of cycles or B, no, not beats, um, bars per second. Wait, is that right? That seems a little too high then. Yeah, let's go with something like, I don't know, 0 0.7. Um, then gate kick 
will take that as the gate argument and then we can put this here let's see if that works whoa what <laughs> That was a little surprising. Um, okay, I think it's doing multi-channel expansion on this thing here. Uh, I see here we have a back tick. I don't know what that means, but I'm gonna put it here. Yep, we're getting a rhythm. Fast. Let's do 0 0.6. Okay, uh, let's define an actual rhythm. So I'm going with something like a Tresio rhythm. the starting note of this is a little too high. Let's try 24. No wait, uh, this is what I wanted to adjust. Okay, we got a kick going and now I'm gonna remove this variable because we're just gonna build everything inside of here. Um, so then instead of instead of sig here, I'm gonna write kick so that we can make some other instruments as well. And at the end, we will, wait, uh, sig, we will just mix everything together. Uh, maybe we have mix.ar. Put here kick and that did not work. Maybe I'll just do the addition manually. variables because they are now kick specific so just bear with me for a moment there's probably a find and replace we could use but Actually, I wonder if I can make my key repeats go any faster. Yeah, that's much better. Um, Still. 
have a reference to frequency one somewhere there. Maybe let's not do the scope so we don't have to close that every time. Alright, and then we can start making more instruments. Um, organize these a little bit better. Actually, C can go here. Okay, uh, then we want a... Let's make a hi-hat. This is gonna be a closed hi-hat. Um, we'll make another impulse sequencer. This is just going to be every 16th note for now. Um, then I think we have a noise. Oh yeah, white noise, let's go with that. Uh, CH is equal to... Uh, does this need any input? No, that's just the amplitude. Okay, and then we need an envelope. Let's go with a percussive one again, since that works. Um, wait, what are these arguments again? Peak and curve. Yeah, I may start playing around with the curves in a moment. Um, now let's see if our keyword arguments actually work. Or if that was just a red herring earlier. And now we'll add this here. And actually I think I want to filter this as well. So we have HPF, I believe. Yep. Six an input and a cutoff frequency. Do we have our HPF? Oh, we do. A resonant high pass filter. Let's go with that. And um, what's a good frequency? Let's start with, I don't know, 800. And now I think the Q is. Oh, so yeah, it is the reciprocal of Q. Although here it's called just Q, that's probably a typo, but that means we want 0 0.9, I think is going to be like a small amount of resonance. I don't know, let's try. That did not work, white noise, parse error. It should be KR, but I don't think that's the problem. Is 
is the issue that I have empty parentheses or what? Yep. Uh, let's tweak that a little. I think we want to go quite high with that frequency. And then this envelope can be even snappier. We're getting somewhere that's almost a beat already. <laughs> And um, I actually want to vary the decay here, or release, I guess. Um, and besides that, I want to try different curves. Now, I never remember which way the curve goes. Let's make that a very high number. Okay, so that's making like a, like an upward curve, so then negative should be a downward curve. Yeah. Yeah, that's sounding more like a hi-hat. But yeah, I wanted to vary this, so I wonder if we have the rand. Oh. So, I'm sure there must be some kind of randomization, but maybe in the huge gen. Oops. Random event. Random positive impulses. Hmm. I'm looking for like a random generator that takes a trigger input. In Super Collider 3, there is one called TRAND and uh, TXPRAND for exponential uh, range for the output. surprised that I can't find any like there's a bunch of noise generators but none of them take uh None of them take a gate, it seems. Dust, I think, is like randomized in time. 
Yeah, because it takes the density, which is an average number of impulses. Oh, maybe we can do it with latch, which is a sample and hold. Wait, so what's the difference between gate and latch? Yeah, I think latch is what we want. Um, Yeah, so let's make a variable for this, so chdk latch kr and we'll have white noise And in here we'll just put the hi-hat gate. So now I think we'll have random values from 0 to 1. But I'm surprised that there doesn't seem to be like a... Like there's no linlin function, no range function, I don't know how you're supposed to map values from one range to the other, except by doing the math manually, and I guess we can do that. Mm. I'll just write the linlin function myself. So it's gonna take as an argument, or rather multiple arguments, um so it takes the number we want to remap uh the input range left to right and the output range left to right and the result will be x minus the input lower bound divided by the difference between the bounds. So that gives us a value between 0 and 1. And then we multiply by the the width, I should say, of the output range, and finally we add the lower bound of the output range. Let's just see if that works by itself. So we'll make... Um, for example, 0 0.5 from 0, 1 to... I don't know, 200, 400. Oh, we should... Yeah, that looks correct. We get 300. And what I really would like to have is lin exp, which is linear to exponential, but I don't want to deal with that math right now, so... <laughs> well, just make do with this. So, we will apply our linlin -lin here, and we'll go from zero, no wait, we'll actually go from minus one to one, 
to, I don't know, something like this. And then we'll use that as our decay. Okay, let's have a listen. Or not. Parse error. Because I'm using white nose AR with empty parentheses. Yeah, that's a weird thing. Uh, seems like Super Glider 2 doesn't like the empty parentheses. Okay, now. That didn't do anything. What? That's strange. Okay, let's try to simplify a little. So here I'm going to comment out all the Linlin -lin stuff and just try to use the latch. And that doesn't work either. Is it because, oh, of course, these need to be both control rate or both audio rate? That is still the wrong type. Um, let me try AR here and here. No. that from there. Weird. Just gonna experiment with the latch a little. So... Let's put here maybe a hundred, so maybe I could even hear it. Yeah, that. Something. Uh, let's try lower frequency. Wait, why am I using plot? I wanted scope. That's my issue. Yeah, this is looking better. So then I can hopefully... Wait, is there a white noise KR even? There is not, so... I guess all of this has to stay AR. Now, does this work? Message minus not understood. Oh. Semicolon should be comma. Yeah, 
Yeah, that looks correct now. Um, but the question is, can we put it here? Seems like we can't. Okay. What about we have a time scale parameter on the end of gen? So if instead I keep this well let's put zero point two here. And then this can be I don't know between a quarter and one and then we put time scale C H G K Okay but we still get this output so let's try now. Yes so you can hear the the um, hi hat decay is now varying randomly, and that is what I wanted. So I think okay, let's just try some constants here. So that's one, and if I make it lower, then I think the decay is longer. No, the other way around, okay. So then actually we might here want to go to something like this. Change the name of this. No, actually, I won't because it is mainly affecting the decay. All right. But I wanted this to start at 0 Yeah, I quite like where that is going. Although it's taken us two and a half hours to get here. Which is not ideal, but that's how it goes sometimes when you're working with unfamiliar technology. Or maybe even worse, sort of familiar technology, but that's different in subtle ways as is the case here. Right, um... I think I want to change up the pattern here a little. Something like this.
What else can we add? Maybe like a baseline. So I'm gonna add some new variables. Now, the interesting thing here is going to be how do we make different notes? Can we do that with impulse sequencer? Yeah, I guess we can put any value here in the sequencer, but... Hmm... Maybe... We'll have to... We'll have to have um, maybe a separate sequencer for the notes. Let's see how that goes. So for now we'll make this a it is just so I think. Yeah. Um we'll need a Base frequency. But here, I want a bit of a longer pattern here, so... No, actually this is fine for now. Um, base frequency... Eight for now, and uh, that goes here. And for the base, we'll also want an envelope. This can have a bit of a longer decay. Half a second, maybe. A bit of a curve, then gate space. Yeah, that should work. Except that we also need to add it to our mix. Okay, that did not in fact work. Um... Why though? Oh, 
probably because we're not getting any gates because we didn't pass the gate 16th or any input gate at all really. That's a little high. Sequencer for the node as well. Let's start at the thirty six. And actually, here I'm not going to need that many nodes. Uh, let's do a Oh, actually, this should all be zeros. Here I think I want minus five, so that's gonna be a fifth, but the fifth uh, on the octave below, and then let's go with a minor third, that's three semitones. Does this work? Who knows? Let's try. not really doing what I expected. Doesn't seem to be having any effect. This is the problem, but okay, you can't do that. Thank <laughs> you. 
No, there's nothing. What? Maybe there's some other kind of sequencer for... Oh, and actually that this one thing that I didn't do convert to CPS from the MIDI note, but So let's put this back. Um, put a MIDI CPS on here. And actually add the 36 first. Maybe now. Whoops. working but I need to keep the note like this because it's resetting the frequency even if Wait, well, no. it's resetting the frequency on every 16th note of course seem to be quite synchronized, right? Seems like the frequency is changing before the amplitude envelope is re triggered. Is that because of the millisecond here? No, but that would be weird. know why that happens. A little bit weird. Oh, is it because these are control rate and it's not precise enough? Let's try audio rate. Um, what? Now I wonder if when we use a 
audio rate impulse sequencer if the input gate also has to be audio rate. I'm just gonna try that. So we'll copy this and make an audio rate version. Like, I would expect it to convert from control rate to audio rate automatically, but who knows with this retro technology. Okay, no. should use that here too. Well, <laughs> that was a different note from the last attempt, but it's not repeating or anything. Wait, what? There was another note. Very strange stuff. Okay, let's get rid of that. Um, convert back to control rate. So the timing is a bit off, but maybe we'll just live with that. And I'm going to add one more note here. Almost as if this sequencer is running one sixteenth note, note ahead of the other one. But how is that possible? Let's test that theory. Yeah. Now it sounds correct. Uh, I don't really understand how that works. <laughs> Let's look at the helper sequencer. This doesn't really help. Very strange. But if we can work around it like this, then sure, why not? Just have to keep that in mind. 
Okay, let's listen to the whole thing that we have so far. And I think we want a filter on that base. So let's put an RLPF. I assume we have that. Yes, resonant low pass filter. And um, wait, it just occurred to me that. Instead of using the 16th note gate here, we could just put gate base here. And then we don't have to deal with all these 16th notes, we can just put... Sequence of the notes that we want. Except that this is gonna do some funny stuff. Okay, let's make like so. You think that'll work? Let's see. It's again running one note ahead of the Impulse sequencer. I don't understand how that can happen, but again, we'll fix that or rather work around it. Yeah, and now for the filter. Um, Let's put, oh, first we need the input here, and then I want a percussive envelope. Um, bit of a curve there. Uh, resonance, I don't know, 0 0.5. No, wait, this is not resonance. Resonance comes here. Here we still want to put the gate base. Mm -hmm. And this is now going to go from one to zero, so maybe we'll lin lin that. Although, this is where I really would like the exponential range, func range functions from Super Collider 3, but. not an option for us today. Wait, I have like mixed tabs and spaces. Why have I done that? I don't know. <laughs> Ugh, it's fine. Uh, this needs to be a keyword argument. That's the resonance, then here we're gonna use our linlin function and it goes from the range 0, 1 to, I don't know, can we put the 
base frequency and then maybe base frequency times eight. Let's try. Oh, yes. That works, and we have a much nicer sounding bass. Then... I'm thinking it would be nice to have some chords on top, but... It seems... Kind of like a pain to do in this version of Super Collider. So I don't know. Maybe just a pad or something. Um, now, what kind of synth do we want to use for that? So let's think. Well, first we need the gate, anyhow. And actually, for this, I don't want 16th triggers, but. Yeah, let's make a gate that's the length of a bar, and that's just gonna be an impulse generator with the tempo as its frequency, because remember our tempo is already in cycles per second, or bars per second I guess but um here we need to declare that variable yeah actually this can just be like so gonna have yeah so now we need to choose what kind of synth we'll be working with uh, what do we have there's where are the oscillators here I wonder what sine grain sounds like. Do they have an example? Okay, that's pretty weird. I kind of like it, but... Spawn.ar Intro 
Interesting. Yeah, I kind of want to use... this in some form. Enjoy formatting again. Trying to wrap my head around this um, spawn stuff. So I'll, I'll want to attenuate it a little anyway. Um, And now I'm noticing that we do have a random function also. That's something I wasn't able to find earlier, but... But I wonder if there is something like... Choose? Say we have one, two, three, and then we would call choose. Yes, there is. So each time we get a random result. Cool. That means we can do something like chords. So instead of a random frequency, we're putting here um Well, first of all, let's oh, Wait, what is this indentation? That's better, I think. Don't need that comment, and then we can collapse this a little. Like so. Um. Let's solo the pad for the time being, and yeah, so here, for this, I'm going to say choose, and then let's add it to 48, so that going to be an octave above our baseline. Uh, we're going to need MIDI CPS to convert from MIDI notes to frequencies. Um, so let's put zero, so that's the root note, minor third, uh, fifth, then, whoops, let's do a Seventh, which is plus three, so that's ten. Or I guess it's going to be a minor seventh, but anyhow, um,
Yeah, now we're not really using the gate at the moment, but that's fine. Let's just try this out. I hear something, but it's very quiet, so let's increase the amplitude here by about 10. You know, this sounds quite nice. Uh, let's make it louder still. Wow, I really like the sound of that. Um, what if we put some more notes? Like, let's add an octave of everything. 15, 19, uh, 22. Yes, I really like that. how it sounds together with everything else. Sorry, my keyboard is on a bit of an unstable surface here, but hopefully that's not a huge problem. Okay, now it's maybe a little too loud. Uh, 0 0.15. This line doesn't really fit now. Something like this. the pad a little bit. No, I don't think we need the resonant version. Let's just do something like, I don't know, 500 hertz. Maybe that's a little too much, 400. Maybe too loud. No. Thank you. 
Let's remove some of these unnecessary comments. And also... Kinda wanna try some different values for this spawn rate here. sidechain effect on that pad so like sidechain to the kick and that should actually quite actually be quite easy to do because we have the gate kick so we'll make another amplitude envelope but this time kind of inverted. So pad times n of gen AR um, yeah percussive is fine again. Let's say half a second, I don't know. Um Was the third parameter the peak level? Not sure if you can put a negative number there. Let's just keep it at one and, um, yeah, because that makes the curve easier to think about. Maybe. I'm just going to put the linear curve for now. Uh, gate is gate kick. And now actually we want to subtract this from 1 so that it's gonna lower the amplitude whenever the kick hits. Um, it's probably gonna be a bit too drastic now but let's try it. Put a bit of a curve after all. Just have to experiment with some values here. Actually, I think the curve might work better in the other direction. And let's make it shorter. Yeah, this is getting in the direction that I want. 
that's too short, so maybe let's increase this again. Yes. And maybe the attack here can be a little slower too. Wait, no, that's not good. Um, something like... Zero three. No, actually, I think the zero point zero one was quite good. Yes, and I'm gonna boost it a little now that it's docking so much. And we already have some random variation on the decay of the high hat, but I was thinking maybe it would be nice to have some also on the amplitude. So I'll just copy paste this. And um, let's go from half to the full amplitude randomly. Um, yeah, I guess we want two separate latches. Because otherwise the decay on the amp will follow the same pattern. Now I'm assuming that white noise generators are independent from each other, but I don't actually know. Or that they're independent and not deterministic. Well, I don't know. Let's see what happens. CHM goes in here as a multiplier. I think it's doing something, but could be... even more. Yeah, I like that. Um Oh, hello Sandington. Uh Sandington and YouTube says sounds great. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Um it's taken quite a while to get here, but I am also quite happy with it so far. Um, okay. I think I'm gonna add one more instrument and then I'm gonna call it a night because I've been at this for three and a half hours now and uh, I'm gonna need to get some food soon but let's make a melody or something like that I'm thinking it'll maybe be more like scattered melodic notes here and there 
and I was thinking uh, hopefully there are delay functions in this version of Super Glider so we can put a bit of spacey delay on everything well not everything but the <laughs> melody instrument So, gate mel, that'll be another impulse sequencer. Uh, it'll take the gate 16th as input gate. And um, what should we use this time? We have wavetable oscillators, but I don't really want to deal with wavetables right now. We have triangles, pulses. Um, We have clang, which sounds kind of interesting. Let's check that out. Oh, I pressed the wrong key. Okay, let me just reopen this help, because funny thing is that you can edit everything, and that's not always a good thing, because you might make something you didn't intend but clang okay so this is like an additive synth sign oscillator bank hmm I don't know about that. Maybe I'll go with a triangle. Wait, but is there a band limited? I don't think there is. Um... Okay, let's use the phase modulation oscillator pair. Um, Hmm, this is interesting, but feels like it's gonna be a bit of math to make this work. Yeah, honestly, I want something simple now. Um, might just put another sine wave and then try shaping it a little bit with Fold or something. Yeah, let's go with that. So, um, we are also gonna want a frequency for our melody instrument. Mel freak. And, um, That'll be a sequencer. Although...
What if I were to use the spawn thing again? I'm gonna read the documentation for spawn because it is interesting. It is after all one of the most important and most powerful unit generators. Hmm. It's important that the sound does have an end. Yes, that's what I was thinking about. So uh, we're using spawn with peace sign grain and I'm assuming since it's a grain, it has like a built-in end. Um, Okay, it's super interesting, but uh, my focus is kind of starting to slip because I'm getting hungry and tired. So I'm going to do something simple. Um, sequencer, did we use AR or KR before? I guess KR. And um, here we're going to have our notes. Uh, this is gonna need a MIDI CPS. Uh, here we're gonna have a sign OSC. Then we're gonna have... I'm just gonna copy the amp envelope to speed this up maybe a little. Mel... Mel... Okay, it's Mel. And finally, we're gonna attenuate it. something like this for a rhythm. Uh, wait, this is no eight notes, let's put nine. To do a bit of a polymeter kind of thing. Uh, here, let's go even higher than before. So we'll start off at 60. And we don't have the shaping yet, but let's give this a listen. And we need to add the melody. Something like this. I'm at this point just putting in numbers at 
almost random to make some generative kind of melody. Uh, that didn't work because we are not passing in a gate. Now I'm kind of out of scale, but I kind of liked it. something like a random sequencer, but I don't know where I would find it. I'm not gonna spend time on that. Let's try it like this. note and then something is out of scale what is it is it this one yeah that's quite nice and then let's put a bit of decay randomization here as well uh, so we'll do Uh, where was the previous one? Let me just copy-paste again. Like so. Message gate not understood because I forgot a comma. That's quite good, but maybe a bit too long. Mm. 
We had some distortion issues earlier that I still haven't quite figured out. Yep, something like this. And then I wanted to shape the uh, melody a little. So I think we had fold to... Can we get help on that? Yes. Now here I'm going to use mouse x dot kr um, so we can tweak this live Okay, so minimum and maximum, uh, what's gonna be a good value? Let's say 0 0.5 to 1, and let's try it out. Let me just solo that for a moment because I want to really dial it in. It's going to be something like 0 0.87. Um, yeah. And actually... I kind of want to have a octave jumping effect here. So what's the best way to do that? Um, I think I can add here another sequencer. And that'll just have like... Zero, zero, 0012 Oh no, my lines are getting too long again um, Let's do it like so Yeah, let's try that Oh, failed But why? 
No, we need the KR. Mm, the fold is maybe a little too much. Yeah, I think that's gonna be fine. And then, finally, is there delay in? Yes. We don't need interpolation, so delay n is gonna be it. Oh, but this is... This doesn't have feedback. Um, is that the same in Super Glider 3? I feel like there is feedback. I'm just gonna check here because I actually do have Super Glider 3 open because uh, my microphone is going into Super Glider 3 for compression and uh, gauging and that kind of thing. Uh, delay and... No, it also doesn't have feedback. But I think there is one that has feedback. What is it called? Hmm. Maybe there isn't, and I've just implemented it myself, then. That's so weird. I could have sworn there was one. Oh, there is, um, all pass in. Yeah. Okay, um... I'll pass an AR, and we have the input, which is mel.
and I think we actually need to mix this manually something like that and then max delay time uh, 500 milliseconds and delay time that could be We have our tempo, so one over tempo is going to be one bar. Then if we do tempo times 16, that's one sixteenth note, I guess. I don't know. Okay, time. Time for the echoes to decay by 60 decibels. I don't know, two seconds. Let's try that. No! Shit. It crashed. That's our first crash today. Um. I wonder. Uh, when I last saved, oh yeah, I did save pretty recent version. Yeah, I think I just, I just tweaked this to, was it 0 0.92? And then the delay. So let's try that again and hope it's not a consistent crash when using the old pass end because that would suck. Um, and remember to save more frequently. Um, okay, I'm actually gonna put in the delay time as a constant for now. And then two seconds here, and let's try it. Okay, so all pass in actually crashes every time. Well, that's no good. Is that the case also for the examples, I wonder? Or am I doing something wrong? Okay, wait, this one is working. Okay, it does work here, so I think I'm just doing something wrong. Let's see here. So this is our input. Oh, wait. I do not want a 500 second delay. <laughs> I was thinking in milliseconds. Um, let's see if this is any better. Yes, indeed. And then let's try to do the thing I was doing with the tempo, so... Okay, what is our tempo? I'm gonna do the math here to check this. So this gives us... That's one second, a bit more, um, but then yeah, I think that should work. 
That's definitely less than the maximum time we specified. Let's try three sixteenths. Actually, let's make it 3.02 to give it a bit of a less robotic vibe. Or maybe it could be actually 2.98. I feel like the delay is now louder than the dry signal, and I wonder why that is. Oh, because <laughs> I forgot to mix it. Feedback to it's now on two seconds. This is such a weird way of specifying the feedback in terms of how long it takes to decay 60 dB. Like, <laughs> I don't find it very intuitive, but let's go four seconds. The one thing that is still bothering me is that it's very clicky and that's because we have an immediate attack, but let's fix that. Okay, and then I think I still want some more octaves here. Uh, where are my octaves? Oh wait, that part didn't actually save. Or rather, I didn't save after doing that part. Well, that's fine. We'll just do it again. Uh, plus 60. Like so. Actually, I don't want to use this as the gate. I'm going to put gate 16th. No, but this isn't good because now it can change in the middle of a note. So let's just put it like this and um, add a 24 for some super high octave action. Game. Wait, what am I? Gate. Yeah, I don't know. Let's try it in the mix. Um. 
It's quite nice, but I do think the 24 is a little too high, so I'm just gonna put that to 12. with this although it took a very long time to get here but it was really nice to learn some old super collider um, if I were to continue on this track I would want to do some more advanced sequencing where can have parts coming in and going out over time. Um, I don't know how exactly that would work in Super Collider 2. Maybe something like well I guess you could make it envelopes that change very slowly and then have those control the level or amplitude of certain parts and probably there's smarter ways to do it because that way you're just wasting a lot of CPU to play things that are gonna be at zero amplitude. Uh, yeah, I'll have to look into it some more. But yeah, that's gonna be pretty much all for tonight. Uh, thank you for joining me. Um, this is the part where I say some kind of nice outro, but I am so hungry and tired that my brain is not braining anymore. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think I'm gonna... Well, I don't know when I'll stream again the next time, but I would like to continue with this project because the thing is, I recently got a... Actually, I could show you. A iBook G3. So, this thing currently is not in very good shape. Uh, the keyboard and trackpad doesn't work at all. Uh, 
I'm not actually sure if there's a hard drive in here, but if there is, it doesn't work at all. It doesn't get recognized. So I'm waiting for a new um, hard drive, or actually <laughs> an IDE SSD to arrive to put in here. And then while I have it open, I'm going to look at the keyboard and trackpad. Uh, if I'm lucky, it's just going to be like a bad cable connection. If not, I don't know. Might have to order a new something. Depends on what exactly is broken there. But I might not do that and just, you know, bring an external keyboard and mouse. But the idea is that in the future I'll be able to do gigs with <laughs> a retro left up because why not and um, it would be cool to get this super collider into a shape where I can run it like as a live gig setup on Mac OS 9 because like that's how I already play most of my gigs nowadays with Super Collider 3 on a slightly more modern laptop uh, using also title cycles, which I guess won't be an option here because Haskell probably does not run on Mac OS 9 but still um, making some kind of Super Collider based live setup for Super Collider 2 I think would be really cool and especially since there apparently is MIDI support, which we didn't get to try today, and also OSC support. I'll have to see about getting uh, the OMS stuff installed and trying some of my MIDI controllers. Um, mainly I use this MIDI fighter twister so if I could get that working here that would be great because this has like buttons you can press and then also knobs you can tweak and for a live setup that's pretty much all you need or pretty much all I need <laughs> and um, if that fails like I don't know, could there be something that this device is too new to be recognized by Mac OS 9 and the OMS MIDI stuff? I don't know, it's been like 15 years since I used OMS, so don't 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 really know. But I'm gonna try that at some point. Failing that there is OSC and um yeah, with OSC, I guess it doesn't really matter what the source of the data is, so I could use, for example, my phone, which is actually what I'm doing to control this, um, this other super collider that's running on the modern Mac. So I have here uh, controls for the mic gate and uh, some other buttons and stuff for tweaking the sound. There is actually a reverb that I can toggle here. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, I think I went on a bit of a tangent there, but to sum it up, I want to make a Mac OS 9 live rig and hopefully I can get the laptop working well enough to do that. But yes, that is going to be it for tonight. Uh, thank you once more for tuning in and I'm just going to remind you about the Megazone compilation that was just released this week. Uh, it's on Zvrra, Zvrra's Bandcamp. 
So I don't know if you can see the URL, but zvera.bandcamp.com, and this is a 90s rave compilation which we just made this year. But my track is on here. It's number eight. It's called Y2K. Um, the compilation is a free download. It's really great. I love so many tr of the tracks on here. So go check it out. And uh, follow, subscribe, uh, all those things for notifications on when I'm going live. And uh, I guess if you're on YouTube, then videos in general, although I haven't been very active recently. But yeah, like, follow, subscribe, and all that. Yes. Thank you so much, and have a good rest of the night, or whatever time of day it is where you're at. I am signing off now. Bye-bye.